If you struggle with gaming addiction, listen up because I'm going to give you three of my own personal strategies and a fire motivational speech to help you overcome excessive gaming. This is The Dr. K Show. I'm Dr. Karthik Ramanan. I help ambitious individuals end self-criticism with tools and strategies to create optimal everyday mental health. If you're new here and you need to silence that critical voice in your head to get out of your own way and live a purposeful life, I am here for you. I encourage you to subscribe right now. It's showtime. Before I go into these strategies, I want you to know that these techniques all come from my own experience. I've been a gamer for as long as I can remember, whether it was Street Fighter 2 on the Super Nintendo, to Quake on the PC, to Call of Duty on more recent consoles, or especially those microtransaction riddled mobile games, I've had positive and negative relationships with gaming. The first thing to acknowledge is that there's nothing inherently wrong with gaming, at least to me and a lot of folks, it's just like there's nothing inherently wrong with a cheat meal. Let's focus on each thing as a simple cause and effect. Eating a cheat meal is normally okay, but you'll have some physiological consequences. Spending time playing words with friends has some benefits to mental acuity, but also takes your focus away from other life priorities. It's all about balance, right? The problem with gaming arises when you play to escape your life. And look, again, I get it. I've used gaming to escape my reality at a couple stages of my life, and there's a reason why it's so attractive when life isn't going so well, and I'll get into that here in a minute, but let's just get into the tips. Number one, create self-awareness. This comes in two parts. First, identify all the benefits that gaming gives you, and this is on a deep level. For many of us, it's community. Sometimes within that community, we're able to serve others to help them get better. We get better ourselves, giving us an outlet for growth, which we all need in our lives. Once you make a list of all those high-level benefits, you'll know what a new activity needs to provide you. For example, for me, I cut out gaming time and focus my efforts on building the Dr. K Show. Gaming provided growth, and so does the show. Gaming provided community, and this show provides that even more. Plus, the show gives me a much deeper purpose. If our new activity gives us more benefits, we won't miss our gaming at all. The second part of creating self-awareness is identifying what you're escaping. I know that's the hardest one, but we have to be honest with ourselves. If we're not honest with ourselves in any area of health, we won't be able to make meaningful change. Is it your professional life that you hate? Is it your romantic life that, uh, that's upsetting you? Do you feel a lack of connection or purpose in your life? The moment we identify what we're running from, that's when we can start to identify what gaming does for us, how it serves us. Because it's not just about running from our problems. We have to know where we go overboard in our time and attention allocation so that we can create a healthy balance. Number two, identify how much time you're spending. Start by logging your time that you play on your console, either in a time management app or just paper and pen. If you play on mobile, use a feature like iOS's screen time to look at how long you use each app. I was hooked to a mobile game for a year and a half, playing here and there, on the toilet, don't judge me, and such. But when I looked at my screen time and saw how many hours that added up to in a week, I quit right away. Cold turkey, no questions asked, deleted, moved on. Remember, your time and your attention are your two most valuable assets. Don't let anyone else use them. You get to choose how to use them wisely. Are you getting value out of this so far? If so, smash that like button right now. Number three, pay attention to the monetization strategies used by the games you play. Are you playing a game that randomly assigns characters and resources with an in-game currency? Have you been burned by rage pulling and microtransactions? A study published in Information Systems Research looked at how players respond to in-game motivators and purchasing options. They found that the more rounds a person plays, the more levels they increase, the more likely they are to spend on purchases. To which I say, duh! 
The more we put into anything in life, the harder it is to walk away. It's the sunk cost fallacy. These companies know that and they want to keep you playing. I'm just going to come out and say it. You are being used. You're being taken advantage of. And if you're allowing that to happen to you, I encourage you to take a hard look at yourself in the mirror and answer this question. What is my life worth? Because are there other areas of your life where you allow people to take advantage of you? The only way to stop it is to cut it off cold turkey and declare that you are worth more than this, you deserve better treatment from yourself, and that you will not subject yourself to this type of behavior from others going forward. Question of the day, have you ever been addicted to a game? If you feel like being awesome and sharing, let me know in the comments section below. Today's progress success is brought to you by my friend and YouTube music maker and teacher, Matthew Stratton. His progress success was simple. I am not alone. Short, sweet, and utterly profound. We often get stuck in our heads like we're weird because we're dealing with things that other people don't have to deal with. But the truth is we all do. You're right, Matthew, we are not alone. You're addicted to your games. I get it, okay? I've been there. I've had healthy relationships with games and I've had not so pleasant ones. I'll go as far as to say that if I could move past it, so can you. And that doesn't mean cutting out gaming entirely. Anyone who's played me in Words with Friends knows that I'm hyper competitive there and I still enjoy a good challenge. But we also don't need to replace meaningful time and attention with excessive gaming. Take stock of what gaming provides you positively community, connection, growth, whatever it may be. Recognize that these are needs that you will seek to fulfill by any means necessary. Gaming just happens to be a way to make that happen. And something else can be that too and more. It all boils down to what your purpose in life is because once you identify and own it, you'll play games for fun, but you won't let them consume you. Your life purpose will consume you and that's a good thing. And if you're stuck on a mobile game with microtransactions and you can't escape, real talk here, you are allowing yourself to be used. Notice what I said, you are allowing yourself to be used. And I'm not blaming you, my friend. I think the whole industry needs an overhaul from these predatory practices. That's why I love the concept of Apple Arcade, no microtransactions, but just because you remove the offending agent doesn't mean you fixed the underlying problem. If you're somebody who's allowed yourself to go down the rabbit hole of excessive loot box hunting, look deep inside yourself and recognize that you were made for more than this. You deserve better than this. Your life means more than this. Gaming can be a great fun outlet and a wonderful way to meet new people. It can provide you a place to grow or even improve your brain health if we're talking about a game like chess but you don't have to be a victim to it as an addiction. You can start to see yourself as somebody who is capable of self-control. You can start to see yourself as somebody who is able to create balance. I know you can. I believe in your greatness.